What's up everybody? How y'all doing? We are back with the Starfield Direct. This is the second half. I don't think this will be as long as the first one, seeing that we only have 20 more minutes. Um, it all just kind of depends on how much bullshit I have to say, and I'm I'm actually going to start with a little bit of little little rant, because this is something that I was that was popping up in my head yesterday, and I figured out what was bugging me during the companion section. I mean, bugging isn't the right word, but the way they described how companions work, I was like, man, this sounds familiar, and I couldn't think what it was, so I was racking my brain of video games uh, that it reminded me of, and I mean, yeah, it's similar to certain things, but with the idea that you have companions and then just generic crew members... And the crew members you can still bring with you and everything. They're just not like the companions that don't have missions, etc., etc. But I figured it out. It wasn't a video game that I was thinking of. It was a board game. I, and look, if you guys watch the channel, I, I don't talk about it too much, but I really do enjoy board games. Um, it's something I've gotten into in the last couple of years. And I don't mean like Monopoly and shit. I mean like cooperative board games. You know, I have Madara. Uh, I also have the literally everything Madara that I'm still waiting on <laughs> delivery later this year. Uh, I have the Bloodborne board game. I have Gloomhaven. I'm still waiting on my delivery for Frosthaven. Um, you know, I, I love those kind of board games. But there's one that I that I that I backed. I think it was on GameFound called ISS Vanguard. It is a space exploration board game, cooperative board game where you're managing a, a, a ship that's uh, exploring space. And the way you, you don't have individual characters, you have these crew members who go to the different section. There's four sections, and there's like security, tech, um, science, and I can't remember the fourth one off the top of my head. But, you know, so there's four sections, and there's all these different cards for each individual crew member. There's like 90, 80 cards for all these individual crew members. And that's what that reminded me of. It was a re I really, 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 really like this um, system that they have going with the crew members. Or, or at least the co the concept. I mean, we're, we're not going to know how it's going to work until we actually get our hands on it. But still, I like the concept. So there we go, that's my opening rant. Putting you in the cockpit of your very own spaceship and telling you that you can do pretty much anything. And that is really cool for us as developers. Space that, flight, that sentence still makes interest. me uncomfortable. And you should feel like you're in complete control every step of the way. You know, I don't hate the whole, oh, you can do anything. It's We've just, mm. that sense of control to ship combat. Sorry, I, I just, I, I don't want to talk over him. The reason... The whole, oh, you can do anything makes me uncomfortable. And I know, I, I, I know from seeing the rest of this that there's still story, there's still missions, there's still something that's going to lead you through the game. But I feel like so many developers use you can do anything as a cop out for we have no story and no direct. It, I don't want to say cop out. Maybe that's unfair because. I always hear people like, oh, I love Minecraft because I can do anything. And I go, I hate Minecraft because there's no direction. Like, that's just, it, it, that's just my thing. Like, I love games that I can build, that I can do, like, like I can do building and, and shit like that. Um, while I was having a video working on my Adobe last night, I was playing um, Chef Life, uh, yeah, Chef's Life, um, Restaurant Simulator, I think is what it's called. Um, game built in Unity. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, it, it's got a little bit of story. It Not a lot, but it, just enough that kind of gives you tasks and everything to complete. But then you get to just run this restaurant however you want. And that's that, that's a lot of fun to me. Because like I said, I'm, I'm fine with being let off, to do, off the leash to do what I want and goof around. But I like... A narrative or, or tasks or something that just kind of leads me around. It just gives me that little extra, hey, you can do whatever you want, but here's something to work towards. It, you know, it, it's not just, eh, do whatever. Here's a, here, go play in the sandbox, you know? 
it's not about just hitting your triggers to fire your weapons. It's a complex dance between your piloting skills and our power allocation system. Boosting power to your engines will make your ship faster. Oh, I thought this was health. It is not. That's hull. Ew. It's, this is, um, oh, shit. This is FTL. That's what this is. Because this is your overall power. The power to your lasers, power to your ballistics, the power to your missiles, the engine. This is FTL in real time. Oh, that's really cool. I mean, I say real time. Yes, FTL technically was. You get what I mean? This is this is a first person like you're in the cockpit of FTL. Oh, that's really cool. See, I thought this was health because I didn't really. Uh, that's the D-pad. I thought that was a uh, uh, you know little health cross thing. Oh, that's cool. Powering up the ground drives will shorten the amount of time it takes before you can make a jump. It's literally FTL. <laughs> and moving your power to your weapons and shields means you're ready for a fight. Oh, that's you neat. Be on your toes because you're not alone out there. Okay, so because I'm a giant nerd, I have to ask this question. So this this grab jump thing that they're doing, is this like Star Wars where when you go to hyperspace or whatever, you're still technically flying through shit? I know the new Star Wars likes to play a little fast and loose with that, but you're you, you know what I mean? You you have to have open you know, line you know, you know, line, lanes of travel the hyperdrive in Star Wars or does, is this one more like teleporting because I know that Howard said that it was kind of like a folding space I'm what else what else used something that was like folding space wasn't that that Star Ocean Last Hope I feel like I've heard that before in a JRPG either way I, does anybody uh, uh, can anybody kind of any smart person explain to me exactly how this uh, this this um, the uh, the grab jump thing works <laughs> to somebody who's you know not that bright? I know I'm an, I said I'm a nerd, but I just I, like I like to understand it. I'm saying I can understand it. Will allow you to zero in on specific subsystems of the ship you target. Okay. This is FTL. It's really weird. After destroying an enemy ship, you can loot the remains from your cockpit. You can always turn any ship that engages you into scrap. But you can also take a more personal approach by docking with the enemy vessel and boarding their ship. I was going to ask that question. I was going to say... Can it, can I do this like Assassin's Creed Four? And, and can I either destroy them or can I board them and kill all the people and take their ship? Um, but no, I, I keep getting so nerdy when I when I'm saying this is just like FTL. I really like that. That is super cool. I've never seen somebody try and take that 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 system from FTL where you're managing your energy as a resource into all your different. Um, I'm trying to think all, all your different systems, which I really, which made, which just added a really cool level of strategy to that game. But I've never seen somebody try and take that into a pure like 3D real time sort of action game. So I'm really, I really want to play around with that. That is super cool. Once you've taken control of an enemy ship, it's yours. Add it to your fleet and retrieve it at any spaceport. But space is way more than fighting for your life. So cool. Just like when you're planet side, 
there are plenty of sights to see and stops to make on the way to your next adventure. Like these massive star yards. Walk the halls, talk to the crew, maybe get talked into buying a whole new ship. A civilian in my star yard. Let's see about getting you a proper ship. Oh, that's a Tatsu. Maybe you'll dock with a gigantic battleship like the UC Vigilance. Or rub elbows with the galaxy's wealthy elite on a cruise ship fit for the stars. There are plenty of personal encounters to be had as well. You can hail any ship you come across to trade, swap info, or maybe even commit an act of piracy. Oh, that's really when cool. Playing, I generally go crazy. Um, I definitely go like the more piracy routes. Um, I want to take over ships. I'm going to board ships. I'm like, this is now mine. I steal all the sandwiches and put them <laughs> you know, in my cargo hold that I have specifically for sandwiches. I don't want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Some strangers might be looking for a little human connection in the darkness of space. God damn it, don't show me those sandwiches. Hello, I'm hungry. Stranger. I just finished cooking up some food. If you want to come on over, just pop on by. Some of the best moments are the ones you discover on your own. The thing I love most about Starfield is that it is a Bethesda game through and through. It's really about going to strange new places, meeting interesting people, and getting sidetracked on zany adventures. Then, realizing two hours later that you're involved in a completely new story. You're... human. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. That... God damn it. This LP for when this game comes out is going to be fucking weird. Ugh. Like, I love playing these kind of games with you, but it's like... Like when I play Cyberpunk 2077, when I play... Um... Tears of the Kingdom, or when I play, you know, whatever. I can spend an hour and a half doing absolutely nothing just goofing around and that's fun for me but i'm but i'm always worried like is that fun content is that whatever like I, i'm 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 gonna be honest a lot of this lp when we play this in august is gonna be hey let's fly around space and mess with people <laughs> and i am all, i am kind of okay with that i hope you guys are too because that just sounds like so much fun DNA is so present here. It's in our random encounters, it's in our handcrafted quests, and it feels so cool to play it and just make your own path in this universe. Oh yeah, now I remember the other reason why I paused. I, I, I also wanted to say, you know, I, this is doing a really good job of getting me hyped for the game, and I know that's kind of a point of this, but now that I'm seeing more of it and how a lot of these systems are gonna work, I'm really excited because I was really afraid is this going to be just fallout in space is this going to be oblivion in space kind of you can definitely see the um the Bethesda skeleton but the trappings and everything that is surrounding it the the systems the it 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 really does seem well crafted for the space theme it's not just oblivion again it is a totally new beast, and I respect that. There are over a thousand planets out there just waiting for you to visit. We want you to feel like explorers, breaking ground on new planets. It's almost like this is the star field that I actually wanted to play. We want you to feel hopeful. We want you to or did I say star field? No Man's Sky that I actually wanted to play. A little fear. We're giving you a massive playground and a ton of toys and just setting you free. Hey everybody, we've shown you so much stuff, but we thought we'd just take a little break and show you something a, a little bit different. You know, we put so much detail into our game worlds and we love the opportunity to bring that into the real world with our collector's editions. And for this game, uh, we've done a watch. It is the Constellation Explorer's Watch. Um, this is the watch that you actually get in the game that acts as part of your HUD where it's the compass and then environmental information. 
It connects to your phone to give you notifications and other information. And we've also designed this really cool case that it comes with, uh, Isvan. Yeah, we really took as much care and designed this case as we did to watch. Our attention to detail and the game totally translates to this. Inspired by the cases that the astronauts used during the Apollo era to bring back samples from the moon, it's got an intricate locking mechanism, authentic, heavy, comes with a constellation patch, NATO strap, and the overall functionality and believability of this as something that would... Okay, this kind of tells me that I won't get the collector's edition because I'm not a big fan of the watch. Well, I mean, I guess it could be a cool showpiece, but I, eh. I like the case more than anything else. Can I get that? I just want the case. In the world, in the Starfield universe. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. I guess my biggest we issue with collector's else. editions right now is now I need a job. Xbox, we get to work with the amazing people on the Xbox hardware team, and together we create this custom limited edition Starfield controller. It's awesome. Right, it is cool. now, you know, our favorite controller. We love this because it's inspired by the actual controls of your spaceship. And not only that, we've created the first ever custom headset with Xbox. And this is a perfect pairing with that controller. Look, I like the design of the controller. Like, I like, you know, the art and everything. It works. Um, my, again, I'm going to keep saying it. I do not like the Xbox Series X controller. Really, I've not liked the, the Xbox controller since 360. Because to me, it feels overly plasticky. It's overly clicky. It just, it, they last more than my PlayStation controllers because I've bought more PlayStation controllers because I keep having controller drift issues. And I guess at the end of the day, I guess, yeah, functionality is important and, you know, how how well they work. But maybe it's also, maybe my PlayStation controllers break more because, you know, I play my PlayStation a lot more and my cats keep knocking them off my desk. That also doesn't help. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, it's just ergonomically, I don't like, the shape of the Xbox controller right now. I don't like how it feels in my hand to play games. It's just, there's just something about it that I just, I'm just not a fan of when compared to the way the PS5 controllers work. Though I've gone back and played my PS4, it's super weird using the, the DualShock after the DualSense because the DualSense has got a lot more meat on it. every one of our games, we always put so much care into all those little details that breathe life into our worlds. But Starfield isn't just a Bethesda Game Studios world, it's a Bethesda Game Studios galaxy. So why go this big with Starfield? Because we want to give you freedom on a galactic level. The freedom to experience both the exciting planets and the quiet ones. Scanning a planet before you land is a great way to get a sneak peek at the available resources you can use for crafting, building, and customizing. I think what's it's cool about this. Oh, that's that neat. So I, so I was curious of how the scanning thing was going to work. You know, I cause whenever I think of scanning a planet for resources, I always think uh, Mass Effect 2, which I, I like that system. That was a lot of fun. But well, that's interesting how he's scanning across. He's seeing uh, iron and the you know, building and customer. Yeah, he's seeing like chlorine, iron. You know, uh, you seeing that that sort of stuff. So you can maybe tell more where you want to land. But again, I, I'm curious: is the whole planet explorable, or when I land on this structure, or am I in like a contained area? I think what's it's cool about this whole system that we, we generate the planet itself as a procedural content, but the handcrafted content itself comes as the player explore. Our system builds a planet as the player approaches it. We stitch together block of terrain, 
After that, we have the system that adds interesting locations for the player to explore, creatures to encounter. Okay. That actually makes me ask a new question. So wait a minute. So is every copy of the game going to be the same or is every game going to be a little different? Because you mentioned they're procedurally generated planets, but then they're stitched together with handcrafted elements. My guess is that they procedurally generated all the planets and then went to them and then handcrafted, you know, then added handcrafted elements to each of them. So every game's my guess will every game will still be the same maybe i i don't know I, I i would like a better explanation of that sounds cool though it kind of answers a question because starfield or i keep saying starfield no man's sky which i know i keep comparing this to but it, a lot of the stuff i'm hearing sounds very no man's sky to me i know that no man's sky um with their with the way their procedural generation worked, with well, everybody's game is going to be a little different. Or and plans to pick up. It allows us to add that touch of environmental storytelling that the Vesta is known for. I want to know what crafting is going to be like. Let me know. That isn't far from here. If you could take care of them for us, we would be in your debt. So even if your friends were to visit the same planet that you had, you would have a different story to tell. Okay. There we go. So it is procedurally generated on the player's end, not on the developer. Okay. Okay. Like, does that make sense what I was saying? Like the like they just basically ran it through, procedurally generated the universe itself and or the individual planets, and then went and edited them? Or is it going to be on the player's side, so everyone's going to be a little different? All right, so that sort of answers my question. Hopefully that made some semblance of sense to anybody. If anybody's going to say, AJ, that's not how that works, you're not how that works. <laughs> that's right, I'm going to be a petty bitch. <laughs> it's completely up to you how you want to interact with each planet whether you want to explore and see what you can find harvest resources and be on your way or simply take in the views see i'm not with necessarily scanner, interested with combat i want to know how crafting is going to work wildlife. if you have the skills you can even figure out that certain creatures and plants you can build an outpost and produce resources from those plants and animals. You can get experience and rewards for fully surveying planets and fully surveying a whole system. When we were concepting these creatures, we really wanted to think of them as natural to the environment. We didn't want alien monsters. We wanted native wildlife, something you've never seen before. When it comes to our exteriors, when the sun moves, all that light is calculated in real time through the atmosphere. Our biggest goal for lighting with Starfield was to make the game feel more filmic, to use lighting and color to really make it feel more cinematic. After some exploring, you can find a spot to set up a base camp. Outposts can be built almost anywhere on any planet. And the habitat modules come in all shapes and sizes, filling all different purposes. You can even live in them. 
assign crew and companions to work at your outposts for added bonuses and set up extractors to harvest resources while you're away. Something cool we have this time is we have a new fly cam where you can toggle between on foot building or you can now use a top down isometric camera which helps plan out larger parts of the outpost and placing those larger halves. So that way you can really plan your structures and what the overall feel of your outpost is. And then when you're on your feet, you can really decorate and fine tune things much easier. Add crafting and research stations in your outpost to utilize any resources you find or already have. Okay. Weapons to adapt them to your playstyle. This is what I've been wanting to hear about. Larger magazines, a selection of grips and barrels, different ammunition like explosive rounds. All you stealth players out there will surely need a suppressor. You can also choose to go hands-on with melee weapons. I think it's always a delicate balance between like what's realistic, what's sim, and what's Hollywood. And I think we sort of err on the side of like what's fun for the player. With Starfield, you know, I, I, I I've gotten into arguments. With people before, I, I'm talking IRL, you know, like I, like when I was in college, I was sitting and talking about video games with somebody, you know, and, and they were they were a gun guy. And they're like, well, real guns don't act like this. The guns don't blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, man, I, I, I get it. I, I understand you know, there, there's a place for hardcore simulation and whatever. Go play Arma. Um, <laughs> but no, there, there's, a, there's a place for hardcore simulation, and, and I really do like it when guns function the way that they're supposed to. But at the same time, Time. I, I I like what they just said there. There's a balance between what's Hollywood and what's realistic and what's fun and everything. You know, it's just like ship to ship. Com I I still say the best ship combat in Assassin's Creed was AC4. And I, so many people try and tell me, oh, Odyssey's ship combat was great. No, it wasn't. Fuck off. Um. <laughs> but no, AC4s was really good. But that's not how ship combat works in real life. Because that wouldn't be fun. It, there, there's always a balance to be struck, and I and I, I I like the I like how they phrase that. We've completely overhauled our combat. It's more dynamic. The animations are more fluid. It just feels great. We probably have more mods and more weapons in this game than <laughs> I want to say any other game we've done before. There's a lot of variety. See, I'm really curious. Can I can I build a gun from the ground up like I could in Fallout 4, or can I do or can I craft my own ammunition? I mean, I'm assuming I can craft my own ammunition, but I'm just I I, I want to know that kind of stuff. I want to know the nuts and bolt, yeah, <laughs> the nuts and bolts of the crafting. Upgraded gear is just one of the many factors to pay attention to when engaging in combat. You may need to switch things up based on your environment. Gravity is different for each planet, and boost packs are excellent for getting around. And for giving you an edge in combat. Sometimes you'll even feel like you're flying. Zero gravity environments pose a different challenge. Firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will actually push you backwards. Oh, that's cool. Energy weapons, on the other hand, offer a more stable shooting experience. We also have mag weapons. These are high-powered electromagnetic induction ballistic arrays. Each barrel has its own targeting laser and can dish out some serious damage. Whether you want to get up close and personal with your own two fists, or you like more compact weapons like pistols and submachine guns. Or maybe you prefer something bigger. <laughs> a log gun with a minigun. 
Starfield's got you covered. Why'd you have to freeze him? Just, just shoot him or stab him. Whatever. You hit a sword. What was that? Thanks oh, come on, you can't just show me today. that we are just and then so just end. That you've taken the time and spent it here. I know there was probably a lot to take in. There's a lot to the game, even more than we could show here. You know, as we play it, we're always sharing these unique and special moments that only a game like this can bring. When I think about what makes it special, it really is the people here. This game is a reflection of the incredible and passionate team that made it, all of them, putting something special of themselves into it. So let's hear some of their favorite moments. I love the way that our final combination of all the new tech has come together to create some of the most beautiful sunsets and sunrises we've ever had in any of our games. I love the creatures, the exploration, every biome is different. The word that comes to mind is vast. I like to use our photo mode to take rock star photos. I hate you. I just love that I hate photo mode. I hate it. Discovery and wow, I can't believe that there's more here. I'm most excited about our outpost building systems. My favorite part is every time you step out on a planet, it's a unique experience. You spend all this time building your ship and you see it on the landing pad. These things are gigantic. It's the kind of thing that you just can't get anywhere else. There's something about seeing a tower over in the distance and going, I know the gravity's low here. I think I can make that jump. My favorite part is biomes, spaceships, audio design, planets, the day-night cycle. Those details matter to me. Diplomacy, exploration, freedom, the ending, Vesco, obviously. I love the robot so much. The incredible amount of worlds we created. Sniper rifles, come on. Lever action, rocket launcher, brain sprout. I laugh, but some people might find creepy. I don't know. I know it's right, Ben. You also have a the piercing. I... I, I don't even know what the fuck to call that piercing, but you have that piercing, and that makes me not trust you. Enjoy most about <laughs> the game is the freedom to be who you want to be, do what you want to do. It's what you've come to expect from a Bethesda title, but on a much bigger scale. On behalf of all of us, we can't wait for you to play Starfield and make your own special moments. Damn it, they even took that. That reminded me of No Man's Sky. Like, I feel like they had a similar animation with their, their title screen. And I said that this game was coming out in August or September. I, I don't know why I was thinking August. Okay, that's a that's a pretty cool box. All right, so final thoughts. Um, I'm hype. 
I'm hyped, man. Uh, I think this game is looking really cool right now. Uh, look, it, it's not going to mean anything until rubber hits the road. Cyberpunk taught us that. <laughs> as much as I still enjoy Cyberpunk, I still think it's a good game. But man, that thing's shit broken. I'm hoping for a better environment for them. Um, I mean, I, I don't think they're in the same... Uh, situation that cyberpunk was with the new console generation, the delays and just, I look, I've said it before. I think CD project was in a rock and hard place and in a, in a really shitty situation back then. Um, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm hoping for more stability, but I'm hoping everything comes together as fluidly as these guys are, are, are talking about. I, I really hope, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some jank somewhere, but I really do hope these systems work out as smoothly as they're talking about, because this game sounds fucking awesome, and I'm, st and I'm stoked. Um, this, this is going to be a really fun LP, and I'm, yeah, we're going to be playing it uh, together September 6th, guys. So that's all I have for you for this direct. Um, probably gonna, I'm going to, I know I'm going to have content later today. I don't know why I'm acting like this is all I'm doing today, but uh, either way. Uh, we're going to close out here. I want to say, as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. Social media in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, helps out with the algorithms and everything. And if you're on BitChute, hey, BitChute, how you guys doing? Um, as far as more showcases, I talked about this in part one, but I'm planning on doing the Xbox showcase and the Ubisoft showcase. Those are the two that I'm still planning on taking a look at later this week. If there's any others that anybody wants to see, please hit me up in the comments, message, message me on Twitter, or anything else. Uh, I'm, I'd am i be happy to go take a look at anything and see if there's anything interesting to take a look at. Uh, hell, I'm still like picking up just random trailers that I'm finding on YouTube, so maybe we'll do a 30-minute video somewhere down the road where we just watch trailers. So, uh, that's the plan going forward. Um yeah, we're just we're just continuing on with uh, with everything, and uh, I don't know why I'm rambling here. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, until next time, I'm out.